three finalists in this year's competition are former champions, known for their exceptional academic prowess. Achimota School has claimed victory twice, in 1998 and 2004, in addition to securing two runner-up positions. Opokuwari School has also claimed the championship twice, along with five runner-up positions. Notably, Presbyterian Boys Secondary School stands as the most successful school in NSMQ history, boasting seven championship wins and 11 runner-up positions. It has been 21 years since Opokuwari School last lifted the trophy, and 19 years since Achimota School celebrated its victory. In contrast, Presec Legon is a defending champion, having triumphed over Prempe College and Adisadel College in the previous year's competition. The Presbyterian Boys Secondary School! With this rich history and rivalry, the stage is set for a highly anticipated grand finale in celebration of the 30th anniversary of the National Science and Maths Quiz. Contestants, the time is now. And gentlemen, <laughs> it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you to the grand finale of this 30th anniversary edition of the National Science and Math Quiz. 30 good years. Let me start by congratulating all the schools that participated in this year's edition of the National Science and Math Quiz. Well done. Thank you also for following us throughout the competition. If you've been following us, you know that we still have the Goal Riddle Bonanza. I need to remind you. Goal PLC is providing some resources to our contestants. We have the Goal Super Bonanza. This takes place in the last round of competition where a single riddle solved is worth 1,000 Ghana CDs. If the contestants solve two riddles, they get 2,000 Ghana CDs. If they solve three of the riddles, they get 3,200 Ghana CDs. And if they solve all four riddles, they get 4,000 Ghana CDs. Thank you so much, Goal PLC, for the Goal Super Bonanza. All right. In this grand finale, we present you with three champions three champions, past champions of the National Science and Math Quiz. We have Achimota School. <laughs> Opo 
Pokuwari School. And our reigning champions, Presbyterian Boys Secondary School. I'm looking forward to a treat. I hope you are too. Before we meet the contestants, I would like to acknowledge our sponsors. The National Science and Math Quiz is proudly sponsored by the Ghana Education Service in partnership with Gold PLC and supported by Joy News, AT, Prudential Life Insurance Ghana, Pepsodent Toothpaste, Better Malt, Ghanaian Academic and Research Network, Coronation Insurance, Accra College of Medicine, Academic City University College, Cowbell, Bell Beverages, GTP, Newmore Africa, Africa World Airlines, Studio HD, Fair Afrique, and YFM. My name is Elsie F. Kaufman. I am an associate professor of biomedical engineering at the University of Ghana. And I'm also the dean of the School of Engineering Sciences, University of Ghana. I'm honored to be your quiz mistress. I'll have you know that this is a prime time production. Now let's meet the contestants. Opokuwari School. is represented by Dantan Sopong, Stephen Kofia Pimaba, you are welcome gentlemen, what does it feel like to be in the grand finale? It feels very exciting to be in the grand finale, it feels very exciting to be in the grand finale. Great, and for you? Very exciting as well. Exciting, all right. Usually for the finals, the grand finale, I take a dear chance to find out a little bit more about our contestants. When you are not doing science and math, what do you do? I play football. Football. Playing the piano. Playing the piano. Okay. And your aspirations, what do you want to do beyond this? A surgeon. A surgeon. A surgeon. Biomedical engineer. Oh, you have good taste. 
<laughs> I wish you very well. Achimota School. Represented by Elagbe Walter B. Ekbajo, Kenneth Bakita. You're welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you How are much. you? You are very fine, thank you. Great. So we are in the grand finale. What does it feel like? I feel really excited and grateful to God for this. Okay, and you? I feel the same. It's really great to be here. Okay, good. Now, I use this opportunity to find out a bit more about contestants. Our contestants are usually amazing people. So, after this, what next? After this, I'll uh, follow my aspirations to become an electrical engineer. Electrical engineer? Great. And you? After this, I'll try to learn new skills, try to improve on the skills I already have, and then try to prepare myself for tertiary level. Okay. Sounds very good. So, gentlemen, I wish you well. Thank you very much. Presbyterian Boys Secondary School.
Unitarian Boys Secondary School is represented by Benedict Party Doty, final year. Moth is selling on coffee, final year. You're welcome, gentlemen. How are you? I'm yeah, fine, thank you. How are you? Good. Gentlemen, we are in the grand finale. Again. What does it mean to you personally? It's an exciting feeling because it marks the beginning to a dream coming true. Okay, and you? It's a very nice feeling knowing that you have worked so hard and you have put your faith in God and you have got you this far. Okay, that's great. And um, what next after this? I plan to pursue medicine after this. Medicine, and you? I also plan to pursue medicine. Medicine. Okay, I wish you gentlemen well. Thank you. <laughs> the custom. The contest comes to you in five rounds. This first round is a round for fundamental concepts. The questions are simple and direct. I'm expecting simple and direct answers from you. If you answer your major question correctly, three points. If the question is incorrectly answered, it becomes available to the two remaining schools. A school may ring and attempt an answer. If right, one bonus point. If not, there is a penalty, one point. For questions which require calculations, you have 30 seconds in which you can present your answer. If there are no calculations involved, you have 10 seconds to present that answer. Gentlemen, you are to provide all of your answers unambiguously and you are to attempt each question once only best wishes to all three schools first set of questions will require about 10 seconds of your time and of course I'm going to be starting with you Presbyterian boys your question why should a disease like sickle cell anemia decrease the blood's ability to deliver oxygen to tissues? Yes, yeah, Selenam. This is because for a disease like sickle cell disease, it affects the for a disease like sickle cell anemia, it affects the shape of the hemoglobin of hemoglobin in the red blood cells and also changes the shape of the red blood cells from their biconcave shape. And this change in the shape will decrease the extent to which the red blood cells and hemoglobin can take up oxygen gas to bind to the hemoglobin present in the red blood cells and, and transport the oxygen that has been taken up through the blood to the tissues for use. Two out of three. Uh, yes, in sickle cell anemia, the red blood cell is crescent-shaped and elongated, stiffened, reducing the ability to deliver oxygen. But I also expected you to add something about what it is that makes it abnormal, the hemoglobin, right? So instead of the normal hemoglobin, you have hemoglobin S, which has a lower affinity for oxygen, right? Uh -huh. Okay, Achimota School. What would happen if no carbonic anhydrase were present in the red blood cells of humans? Yes, Bakita. If there's no carbonic anhydrase present, the red blood cell would not be able to, to gain the the oxygen from, that is, it will not be able to take the carbon dioxide and fuse with the water to form the carbonic acid. And the carbonic acid is an essential, it's, it's an essential compound that the red blood cell uses in the transport of the oxygen. So if it is unable, to form this carbonic acid, then it, it will not be able to gain the oxygen for the transport of the oxygen in the body. No, for bonus.
Okay. This is not about transport of oxygen. No, it is not. If you don't have the carbonic anhydrase, carbon dioxide would not be hydrolyzed into carbonic acid or bicarbonate. So you will have very little carbon dioxide dissolving in the blood, right? In fact, you will get only about 15% carbon dioxide in the blood to be transporting it away. So it's about transport of carbon dioxide, not oxygen. All right? Uh -huh. So when you have the carbonic anhydrase, you can have the hydrolysis that takes place. You now have the carbonic acid or bicarbonate, which now can take up more CO2 for transport away from the tissues. Does that make sense? I hope you're also learning something. Great. Okay, Opokwari School. What makes exposure to carbon monoxide dangerous to humans? Yes, Stephen. Since hemoglobin, that is the hemoglobin present in red blood cell, has high affinity for carbon monoxide, when carbon monoxide is introduced into the blood instead of the regular carbon dioxide, it bonds with the hemoglobin to form carboxyhemoglobin, which has a low affinity for oxygen gas, and hence the oxygen gas cannot be absorbed by the carboxyhemoglobin to be transported to cannot bind to the carboxyhemoglobin, which cannot bind to the oxygen to be transported to the parts of the body, that's the tissues of the body. And because of this, the carbon monoxide is, decreases the affinity for oxygen in hemoglobin. Two. It is a lot simpler, right? It is a lot simpler. You were mixing some things in there, which... Uh, okay, so listen to what I was expecting. Carbon monoxide, yes, has a higher affinity for hemoglobin than oxygen. I didn't expect you to be talking about carbon dioxide. I wanted you to talk about oxygen. Uh, so, yes, it has a higher affinity the hemoglobin has higher affinity for carbon monoxide than it does for oxygen. And so what happens is if you have the carbon monoxide present, it binds to the hemoglobin, it makes it difficult for oxygen to displace any of that, and so it's not able to take up the oxygen, and that is the reason why it becomes dangerous. You know our blood is supposed to be helping us transport oxygen, so if it's tied up with this carbon monoxide, that can be a problem that can lead to actual fatalities. So I hope all of you, you have understood this. In your homes, you are supposed to have carbon monoxide detectors so that, yes. <laughs> so, so that you don't get into the situation where he, your hemoglobin is completely saturated with carbon monoxide instead of oxygen. All right, next set of questions, 30 seconds, and I have a preamble to all schools. Preamble. An object on a rough plane inclined at exactly 60 degrees to the horizontal is given an initial push down the plane. The coefficient of friction between the object and the plane is 3.0. I hope you got your preamble. One more time. An object on a rough plane inclined at exactly 60 degrees to the horizontal is given an initial push down the plane. The coefficient of friction between the object and the plane is 3.0. So now, Presbyterian boys, what must the initial speed of the object be if it moves 1.0 meter before stopping? Yes, Patty. You have 
7.7 meters per second. That's incorrect for bonus. All right, the right answer is 3.5 meters per second. Achimota School with the same preamble. If the initial speed of the object is 4.1 meters per second, how far down the plane does it move before stopping? Walter, go ahead. We have 8.0 meters. That's incorrect for a bonus. <laughs> the right answer is 1.4 meters. Opokwari School with the same preamble. If the object moves 2.0 meters before stopping, what is the duration of its motion? Seven. Zero point six zero seconds. Again? Zero point six zero seconds. That's incorrect for a bonus. <laughs> the right answer is zero point eight zero seconds. I have a preamble to all schools. Preamble, and you only require about 10 seconds of time, but listen carefully to this preamble, okay? Are you listening to your preamble? Okay. Would the mixing of stoichiometrically equivalent quantities of the given reagents in water give rise to an acidic basic or neutral solution. Clearly explain, indicating the formula of the product formed. Did you get your preamble? Okay, so I'm expecting three things from you. Whether you will have acidic, basic, or neutral, then you are to explain and give a formula. So this is the preamble again. Would the mixing of stoichiometrically equivalent quantities of the given reagents in water give rise to an acidic, basic, or neutral solution? Clearly explain, indicating the formula of the product formed. I hope you got it this time. So now, Presbyterian boys, your reagents. Ammonium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. Salinam. Yeah. Okay. The formula of the products formed is NH4 in the bracket subscript 2 SO4 and it will yield acidic rise. It will yield an acidic solution. And this is because the ammonium sulfate that is formed would undergo dissociation in the aqueous solution to form ammonium ions and the sulfate ions. And the Ammonium ions would undergo cation hydrolysis with the water molecules present to yield, to yield ammonia and the hydroxonium ion, that's H3O+. This is because the ammonium ion is derived from a weak base and reacted with a strong acid. So, so the end point of yes, the Yes, well done. <laughs> with the same preamble.
with the same preamble at Chimota School. Your reagents are barium hydroxide and acetic acid. Walter. Okay. The product form would be C. That's the salt form would be C H three C O O. All that is in a bracket and subscript two B A and this salt would be basic. would be basic. This is because the open bracket CH3 COO a close bracket 2BA would dissociate to produce the CH3 COO minus ion. And this ion will undergo anion hydrolysis to yield excess OH minus ions to make this basic. Yes, well done. <laughs> Opokuwari School with the same preamble. Your reagents are strontium hydroxide and nitric acid. Yes, Dante. The product form would be SR, open bracket, NO3, close bracket, subscript 2. And the salt would be neutral. And this because it was formed from a reaction between a strong base, that's SROH, subscript 2, and a strong acid, H, HNO3. Hence, the salt form will not undergo hydrolysis in water, hence neutral. Well done. <laughs> Next set, 30 seconds with the preamble to all schools. Preamble. Find the values of the constants A, B, C, and D. Given that the cubic function Y is equal to AX cubed plus BX squared plus CX plus D has a stationary point at P and a point of inflection at Q given one more time. Find the values of the constants A, B, C, and D, given that the cubic function y equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d has a stationary point at P and a point of inflection at Q given... All right, so Presbyterian boys, your point P has coordinates... 0, 3, and Q has coordinates negative 1, 5. Yes, party. Okay, so we have the value of C to be equal to 3. Then we have, we have the value of, read this equation. We have the value of B to be equal to 0. Then we have 
D to be equal to 5. Then we have A to be equal to 2. That's incorrect for bonus. Did they make it? No. All right. Let me hold on to the answers. I'll tell you in a moment. With the same preamble at Chimota School, P has coordinates 1, 4, and Q has coordinates 0, negative 4. Walter? B is equal to negative 2. D is equal to negative 4. A is equal to a fraction. That's 1 over 3. And C is equal to C is equal to one. That's incorrect for bonus. Okay, I'm holding on to your answer. With the same preamble of Pokuwari School, P has coordinates zero, negative five. And Q has coordinates 1, 7. Yes, Dante. Okay. C is equal to negative 5. And A is equal to negative 1. B is equal to positive 3. And then D is equal Two. One. That's incorrect for a bonus. All right. Let me first tell you about my marking scheme before I tell you the answers. You see that I was asking for four values. If you got one correct, no mark. If you got two, you got one mark. If you got three, you got two marks. And if you got all four, then you would have the four marks. That was a marking scheme. So now let me tell you your answers. Um, Presbyterian boys, A is one, B is three, C is zero, and D is three. Achimota School, A is negative four, B is zero. C is 12, and D is negative 4. <laughs> Opokuwari School, A is negative 6, B is 18, C is 0, and D is negative 5. <sighs> Trust me, by next year, our contestants will know what to do with a question like this. All right. Next set, 10 seconds with a preamble to all schools. Preamble. Explain the following with respect to the levels of taxonomy corresponding with the three periods of taxonomy. Did you get your preamble? One more time. Explain 
the term I will give you with respect to the levels of taxonomy corresponding with the three periods of taxonomy. All right, so Presbyterian boys, alpha taxonomy. Selenam. Okay, so alpha taxonomy refers to a form of taxonomy in which organisms are grouped based on their ancestral species from which they evolved and the relationships between these ancestral, ancestral species from which they evolved and how these ancestral species undergo um, e evolution to develop into different, new different species that are distinct from the ancestral species originally. That's incorrect for a bonus. Okay, I'm holding on to your answer. Achimota School, Beta Taxonomy. Yes, Bakita. Beta Taxonomy has to do with the mode of classification or arrangement of organisms into groups based on the based on Carolus Linus two system of cl classification. That's incorrect for bonus. Okay, I'm holding on to your answer as well. Opokwari school gamma taxonomy. Yes, Stephen. Gamma taxonomy is the form of taxonomy that deals with the classification of organisms based on their ancestral linkages. That is their clades and their four ancestors. No, I'm not giving it. <laughs> okay. So we have three periods of taxonomy, right? The alpha taxonomy, that is the level of taxonomy by which the species are characterized and named, and that is actually what Achimota was talking about. You know, the two name system, the Linnaeus, that is alpha, okay? Uh -huh. So characterization and naming, that is alpha taxonomy. So beta taxonomy has to do with the level of taxonomy by which the arrangement of species in their natural system of categories are made. So you can now have lower categories, higher categories, and so on, right? That's a beta. And then for you, Opokuware, the gamma, this is the level of taxonomy which deals with the intraspecific variations and evolutionary sequence and also the, the, the causal interpretation of organic diversity. So it's the study of speciation and evolution. Okay, so you see, these are the levels of taxonomy. We learn something new every day. All right. Next set, 10 seconds with a preamble to all schools. I think you'll enjoy this one. <laughs> mm. So preamble to all schools. Some astrophysical instruments are named for scientists who made significant contributions to our understanding of nature. Give the full name of the indicated instrument and state the principal spectral region or regions in which it operates. Please, did you get your preamble? One more time. Okay. Some astrophysical instruments are named for scientists who made significant contributions to our understanding of nature. Give the full name of the indicated instrument and state the principal spectral region or regions in which it operates. Okay, so your instrument, Presbyterian boys, JWST. 
Yes, Patty. Okay, so this is the James Webb Space Telescope. And the region within which it operates is the ultraviolet region, the visible light region, and the infrared region. Two. Of course, you are right, it's the James Webb Space Telescope, and the region is just infrared. That's it. Okay. Achimota School with the same preamble. H-S-T. Yes, Bakita. The full name, the Hubble Space Telescope, and it operates in the visible spectral region. The visible light spectral region. Two. Of course, you are right, is the Hubble Space Telescope, and it operates in the ultraviolet, in the visible, and the near infrared. Okay, Opokwari School, same preamble, FGST. Seven. The Fritz Gerald Space Telescope, and it measures within the infrared spectral vision, the visible light spectral vision, and the ultraviolet spectral region. That's incorrect for bonus. The right answer is the Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope, and it operates in the Gamma Ray region. Gamma Ray. All right, next set. This actually is one of those questions where I move around gathering right answers. So when I get to your school, kindly provide me with a right answer to the question which I'm going to read out so that I can move on for the next right answer, different from what has already been said. I hope that's fine. Okay, so this is the question. An important product can be formed from the reaction of two reagents, A and B. One of these reagents is to be added in excess. Please give and explain only one, one major reason that will generally justify the selection of one reagent over the other as a reagent in excess. Again? All right. So an important product can be formed from the reaction of two reagents. The two reagents are A and B. One of the reagents is to be added in excess. You are to give and explain only one major reason that would generally justify the selection of the one reagent over the other reagent as a reagent in excess. So Presbyterian boys, first choice, your reason. Yes. Okay, so the reagent that should be used in excess should be relatively cheaper than that that, will be used in, that should be in a limited amount. And this is because if the more expensive reagent is used in excess, a lot more amount of money will be pumped into the, into the um, letting the reaction take place. And so the cheaper one is kept in excess so that a smaller amount of money is spent in keeping the reaction proceeding. All right. Achimota School. Yes, Walter. Go ahead. This is done in order to cause the procedure of a complete or full reaction. For example, in the oxidation of certain substances where the oxidant or the oxidizing agent is added in excess to fully 
oxidize the substance and to complete the reaction. Um, I'll give you one. I'll explain later. Opokuare. Yes, go ahead. Dante. The reagent that was chosen to be in excess was due to the fact that the, it, be, it depends on the product that was formed. That's the major product. Hence, the reagent that was taken in excess must be equivalent to, or like it must. I can barely the, hear you. The, Clearly, loudly. The reagent that was, that was taken to be in excess is due to the fact that the major product form has um, the reagent must have a combination so as to like produce that desired major product. So the reagent that was taken in excess must lead to the formation of that major product. That was why the reagent that was taken to be in excess was um, selected as such. Okay, remember, I was only asking for one explanation, one, and it had to be major, right? It had to be major. So these were the kinds of answers I was looking for. The first one is what was given by Presbyterian boys, that yes, that it has to be low cost, right? If it's low cost or less expensive or it's more readily available, then you can use a higher quantity without breaking the bank. Basically, that was your answer, right? Uh -huh. You see, that's very important. The other one, hmm, which I gave you partial for, had to do with it does not lead to side reactions, so there's no unwanted products. You talked about complete reaction, and that is why I felt I should give you partial credit for that. So it doesn't lead to side reactions, it doesn't form unwanted products, and so if this happens, what you would have is you have low purity product, right? So it was kind of related, that is why I gave you. Other things you could have told me, and by the way, when I get to you, you are supposed to give me something completely different from what has been said. If the product is, the reagent has low toxicity, or it's easier to handle, or it's environmentally friendly, then it will not cause health or environmental harm, and that is the reason why you will choose it, right? That is one, one other one. And then finally, if it's easier to separate from the product, so the excess reagents will always be present, right? It was going to be present. So you have to have a means of separating it so that you have your pure product. These are the reasons why you would choose one of those reagents instead of the other one. Is that okay? These are all in line with sustainable chemistry. All right, next set. 30 seconds with a very short preamble. Preamble to all schools. Preamble. Solve the given equation for x. That's a preamble. I'm sure this one you heard. So Presbyterian boys. x raised to the power x is equal to 3 raised to the power 81. Party. X is equal to 27. You're right. <laughs> Achimota School with the same preamble. X raised to the power of X is equal to 2 raised to the power 64. Walter? X is equal to 16. You're right. <laughs> Opokuari School, with the same preamble, X 
raised to the power x is equal to 4 raised to the power 1024. Yes, Dante. X is equal to 64. That's incorrect. <laughs> you didn't. Okay. X is 256. Yes. Next set, 10 seconds. Presbyterian boys, your major question. How, how does the cornea of the human eye obtain oxygen when it has no blood supply? Selenum. Okay. So, if, even though the cornea of the eye does not have blood vessels present in it, the other organs present in the eye have associated blood vessels with them, and these blood vessels tend to nourish the cornea of the eye. And an example of such structures in the eye include the tapetum lucidum, which tends to use the blood vessels present in it to transport the necessary material that will be needed by the cornea to and from the cornea? No. Yes. Seven. Although the cornea has no blood vessels, it obtains oxygen gas by diffusion from the outer environment. That is, oxygen gas from the environment diffuses through the eye to the cornea, and then that oxygen is... Yeah. <laughs> Motor School. Why do butchers and many meat retail packaging manufacturers treat beef and pork with carbon monoxide. Yes, Bakita. Treating the meat with carbon monoxide will enable the meat to last longer. And the meat will last longer because the microorganisms that would cause the spoilage of the meats due to the presence of the carbon monoxide would be killed. And since these microorganisms would be killed, they will not be, or they will not be able to survive, the meat would not spoil early. No. Yes. Okay. When the beef or the meat is treated with carbon monoxide, the cells within it will not be able to synthesize ATP or energy. And this leads to a situation called rigor mortis, where the body becomes stiff or the meat becomes stiff. And the butchers need the meat to become stiff so that it may be appetizing or uh, it will have taste to the consumer. And they see the carbon monoxide has low affinity for oxygen when it bonds with the hemoglobin, which forms carboxyhemoglobin. And since it has low affinity for oxygen gas, it will lead to insufficient energy or ATP. Mm, oh. I'm not accepting this. For <laughs> not for a bonus, no. <laughs> hey! 
Okay, stories. <laughs> uh, you see how bright our young people are? We had a question on carbon monoxide earlier. So he's extending that to the storytelling something for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what exactly is this carbon monoxide doing? It extends the stability of the red color. When they treat the meat with the carbon monoxide, the red color of the meat is retained. It's stable for a longer time. The meat does not discolor easily. And in addition to that, there is a disadvantage of uh, aerobic packaging, like the lipid oxidation. When they use the carbon monoxide, it stops that from taking place. Okay, so mainly to keep the red color so it looks fresher for a longer time. Isn't that interesting? So you see the same carbon monoxide that you should be avoiding because it will replace oxygen in your hemoglobin. It's also very useful in retaining the freshness or apparent freshness of meat. Interesting compound, right? Carbon monoxide, remember that. Okay. Opokwari School, your major question. Why is the small intestine longer in herbivores than in carnivores? Seven. This is because in herbivores, they need to digest the plant material that they, that they ingest. But in carnivores, they only take in meat and flesh. And since in herbivores, they need to digest these plant materials and the cellulose within these plant materials, they need enough surface area to be able to facilitate these digestion processes. But in carnivores, since the meat is only rich in mostly protein, it can easily be digested in the stomach. But in the herbivores, since they, since they ingest plant materials and cellulose containing materials, they need large surface area for the enzymes to act upon these cellulose materials. I'll give you one. <laughs> Yes, it has to do with cellulose digestion, right? But it's not surface area. You see, it's longer. To give it a longer transit time, okay? So you need a long time. It's not easy to digest cellulose. So you need a long time. So the longer it is, the longer it stays in there and gives it an opportunity to be digested, not the surface area you were talking about. I hope you understand. Do you understand? Do you understand? Uh -huh. All right. Next set, 10 seconds, with a preamble to all schools. Preamble. Digital devices have played an important role in the development of scientific instrumentation give the full name of the indicated component of a digital system. Did you get your preamble? Okay, one more time. When I get to your school, I will give you a component of a digital system. You are to note that digital devices have played an important role in the development of scientific instrumentation. When I give you the component, please give the full name. I want the full name. All right, so Presbyterian boys, F-P-G-A. Yes, Patty. Hmm? Okay, so we have, we have, File, program, generic access. That's incorrect. We're bonus. Okay. It's field 
programmable gate array. With the same preamble at Chimota School, EPROM, or E-P-R-O-M. Yes, Walter. Go ahead. Electronic program read only memory. That seems correct. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Erasable programmable read only memory. Yes. Now your major question with the same preamble. MCU. Seven. We have the magnetic control unit. That's incorrect. For bonus. The right answer is microcontroller unit. All right, next set, 30 seconds. Presbyterian boys, calculate the standard enthalpy change for the formation of hydrogen chloride given NH3 gas plus HCl gas going to NH4Cl solid and delta H, delta H naught is equal to negative 175 kilojoule per mole. N2 gas plus 3H2 gas going to 2NH3 gas. Delta H naught is negative 92 kilojoule per mole. N2 gas plus 4H2 gas, plus Cl2 gas, going to solid 2NH4Cl, delta H naught is equal to negative 630 kilojoule per mole. Party. Okay, so the standard enthalpy of formation is given as negative 236 kilojoule per mole. That's incorrect. Yes. Steven, go ahead. Negative 94 kilojoules per, per mole. No. I will hold on to that answer for now. Achimota School. Calculate the standard enthalpy change for the formation of ethane given. 2C2H2 gas plus 5O2 gas going to 4CO2 gas plus 2H2O liquid. Delta H naught is negative 2,600 kilojoule per mole. C solid plus O2 gas going to CO2 gas. Delta H naught is equal to negative 395 kilojoule per mole. And then 2H2 gas plus O2 gas going to 2H2O liquid. 
delta H naught is equal to negative 580 kilojoule per mole. Yes, Walter. I have negative 70 kilojoule per mole. That's incorrect. Yes. Patty. Okay. We have positive 220 kilojoule per mole. Yes. Opokuare. Calculate the standard enthalpy change for the combustion of methane gas given C solid plus 2H2 gas going to 2CH4 gas Delta H naught is equal to negative 70.0 kilojoule per mole. C solid plus O2 gas going to CO2 gas. Delta H naught is equal to negative 395 kilojoule per mole. H2 gas plus half O2 gas going to H2O liquid. Delta H naught is negative 290 kilojoule per mole. Yes, Stephen. Okay. We have negative 940 kilojoules per mole. That's incorrect. Yes, uh, Walter. We have negative 840 kilojoules per mole. All right. For your major question, the right answer, and you went, to, you went for it for bonus and didn't get it right. The right answer is positive 94 kilojoule per mole. Positive. All right. And then for your major question, the right answer is positive 940 kilojoule per mole. Positive, not negative. All right. Last set of questions for the round. 30 seconds with a preamble to all schools. Please listen to your preamble. Preamble. Eliminate theta from the pair of equations and obtain a Cartesian equation in X and Y. Please simplify as much as possible. Shall I repeat that preamble? Okay, so eliminate theta from the pair of equations I will give you and obtain a Cartesian equation in X and Y. You are to simplify as much as possible. All right, so Presbyterian boys, X is equal to sine of theta plus cosine of theta. Y is equal to sine of theta minus cosine of theta. Selenam. Okay, so the Cartesian equation is given as x squared 
plus y squared equals 2. You are right. With the same preamble at Chimota School, x is equal to 2 multiplied by sine of theta plus cosine of theta. And y is equal to sine of theta minus 2 multiplying cosine of theta. Walter? Okay. We have... Should I start saying this? X, Y. X squared plus y squared is equal to five. five. You are right. <laughs> Opokuari school with the same preamble. X is equal to sine of theta plus three multiplying cosine of theta. And y is equal to 3 multiplying sine of theta minus cosine of theta. Stephen? x squared plus y squared equals 10. You are right. And that's the end of the first round. Pass nine points. Achimota School has 11 points. Presbyterian Boys Secondary School has 18 points. We have a long way to go, four more rounds. Round two. This round is the Pep Soden Speed Race. The Speed Race is sponsored by Pep Soden Toothpaste, Every Smile Matters. In this round, I'm going to be presenting you with the questions at the same time. For an opportunity to answer a question, you must ring for it. May I hear your bell, Okokuari School? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you ring an answer correctly and it's the first attempt at the question, three points. If it's a second attempt at the question, two points. And if it's a third attempt at the question, one point. But please be very careful because if you attempt to answer a question and you are unsuccessful, unsuccessful meaning you are unable to provide the correct answer, or you are unable to provide an answer within three seconds of ringing, you lose a precious point. In order to know that you have exceeded your three seconds, we have a bell as well. When you hear that, it means whatever it is that you are saying or have said or have been unable to say, that's your answer, and chances are you have already picked up the penalty point. All right? For questions which require calculations, you have up to 30 seconds to provide an answer. If there are no calculations, you have the usual 10 seconds to do so. Best wishes, everyone. First set of questions, 30 seconds each. First one. Since July 1st, 2017, the maximum level of sulfur allowed in petroleum products in Ghana is 50 milligram per liter, reduced all the way from 3,000 milligram per liter. Assuming that petroleum in an automotive vehicle contains 
25 milligram per liter of sulfur, calculate the maximum mass of sulfur dioxide released into the atmosphere from burning 15 liters of this product. Yes. It is Go ahead. 750 milligrams. Yes. Next one. When a matchstick is struck on a matchbox, potassium chlorate reacts with phosphorus P4 to produce tetraphosphorus decaoxide and potassium chloride. What mass of the phosphorus oxide is formed when one mole of potassium chlorate reacts, you may take atomic mass of phosphorus to be 31.0 gram per mole. Yes. Which of you, um, Stephen? The mass is equal to 7.4. Who rang next? Yeah, go ahead. The mass is 85.2 grams. Did they make it? They didn't. You didn't make it in time. The bell had gone. The right answer is 85.2 grams. Yes. Um, gentlemen, let me give you some friendly advice. Let me give you some friendly advice, gentlemen. This is the Pepsodent Speed Race. When you ring, that is not the time to be telling me we have uh, Madame. All those things are unnecessary. Straight to the point. When I hear my bell, I give you the deduction. All right, next one. The pH of a newly formulated water-soluble product of density 1.25 gram per centimeter cubed is 3.00. This product does not meet the specification of a minimum pH of 4.00. What is the minimum volume of deionized water needed to salvage 4.00 kilogram of the product to meet the required specification? Yes. Which of you, Selenam, go ahead. The volume is 3.00 by 10 to the power negative 2 meter cubed. That's incorrect. All right, the right answer is 28.8 decimeter cubed, or 28,800 centimeter cubed. Next set, 30 seconds each. First one. Find the equation of the locus of the point P with coordinates x, y, if it moves in the xy plane such that it is equidistant from the point A with coordinates 0, 5 and the x axis. Okay, go ahead. Yes, Dante. x squared 
is equal to 10 y minus 25. You are right. Next one. Find the domain of the function f of x is equal to square root of the expression 18 minus 3x minus x squared. Yes. Go ahead, Dante. X is such that x is a member of all real numbers where x is greater than or equal to negative, negative 3, or x is less than or equal to. Did anyone else ring? OK, go ahead, settle now. X is such that x is a member of the set of real numbers where negative 6 Less than or equal to x. Less than or equal to 3. Yes. <laughs> Next one. Find the least value and the greatest value of the trigonometric expression 50 over, and this is an expression with three terms, 8 multiplying cosine of x plus 6 multiplying sine of x plus 15. Yes, go ahead, uh, Damte. The, the greatest value is 2, and the least value is 10. That's incorrect. Who rang next? Yes. Yes. The Go ahead, party. So what you say? The greatest value is 10, and the least value is 2. Yes. That's the right order. Next one, 30 seconds. A solid sphere of radius 0 0.20 meter swings about a pivot on its surface. Find the distance between the pivot and the center of oscillation of the sphere. The right answer is 0 0.28 meter. Next one, 10 seconds. What is the origin of the iridescence of heated steel cooled in still air? Oh, contestants did not want this one. Does anybody know why? <laughs> okay, so if you heat steel, right, in steel, and if you heat steel and you cool it in steel air, you will see some iridescence, nice colors on the surface. And the question is, what causes that? Have you people seen that before? Yes, some people have seen it. OK, so the phenomenon is called thin film interference. Thin film interference. 
And why? What that, why does that happen? Because you have a surface temperature distribution. The temperature is not the same everywhere. So you will have an oxide being formed on the surface, right? But the oxide will have varying thickness because of the difference in temperature. And this is what happens to cause the thin film interference, which makes the surface all shiny. Very nice. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> OK, good. I hope you appreciate that. Do you appreciate it? Good. All right, next one, 10 seconds. When heated sodium vapor is placed in a magnetic field, the characteristic sodium yellow lines are split into multiple lines whose separation increases as magnetic field strength is increased. Name the phenomenon. Yes, Dante. Zeeman effect. You are right. Last set of questions, 10 seconds each. First one. Name the law that explains that each trophic level in a food chain. Yes. The 10% law. That's the ten, and it explains that. I continue. Transfers 10% of its energy to the level above it. The other 90% of their energy is lost as heat or used for growth and reproduction. Yes, it's a 10% rule, but you have to add is a 10% rule in food chain. 10% rule in food chain. Okay, next one. I'm sure you heard me telling them to give the answers unambiguously. All right, next one. What happens to ingested starchy food that enters the stomach but has not been fully digested by the salivary amylase? Okay, so you know that there are different types of amylase, right? So when the salivary amylase has not finally done its work on the starchy food, when it enters the stomach, the pancreatic amylase will act on it. So the pancreatic amylase will continue the work. Is that all right? Good. Last one for the round. Please pay careful attention. Last one. Determine the order of genes along a chromosome based on the following recombination frequencies. AB, eight map units. AC, 28 map units. AD, 25 map units. BC, 20 map units. And BD, 33 map units. Did they make it? No one made it. The right answer, the right answer is D, A, B, C. And that brings us to the end of the speed race.
two. Rusak Legon is in the lead, hoping to win their eighth trophy uh, today. Achimota School is also poised, uh, you know, to win the contest. We've been yeah. speaking to many of the old students here, and they tell us that they are confident that they will be able to overturn that early lead. But let's see what's happening. So that we have the corrected version. Opokuwari School was to calculate the standard enthalpy change for the combustion of methane gas given, and there was a series of uh, reactions. Solid carbon plus 2H2 gas going to 2CH4 gas, delta H0, negative 70.0 kilojoule per mole. Solid carbon plus oxygen gas, O2 gas, going to CO2 gas. Delta H naught, negative 395 kilojoule per mole. And H2 gas plus half O2 gas going to liquid H2O, delta H naught, negative 290 kilojoule per mole. Opokuwari School gave me an answer. Please, what was your answer if you remember? <laughs> Go ahead. Negative 940 kilojoules per mole. Yes, negative 940 kilojoules per mole. That was right. <laughs> All right. Based on that, I have to revise my scores. At the end of the first round, Opokuwari School had 12 points. Achimota School had 12 points, and Presbyterian Boys Secondary School had 18 points. At the end of the second round, Achimota School has 12 points, Opokuwari School has 14 points, and Presbyterian Boys Secondary School has 23 points. Round three. This round has the problem of the day. By the way, uh, Minister for Education, this is your chance. If we can find Akroberto, you can partner him to do problem of the day. in this round is a Prudential Life Insurance NSMQ star. The NSMQ star is a reward for any school that earns a perfect score of 10 points in the round. The problem of the day will engage you for a little longer than what we've seen so far. So from the time I ask you to begin, you will have four minutes to present an answer on the screens behind you. As mentioned, the problem of the day is worth 10 points, and the Prudential Life Insurance star at this stage of competition is worth 4,000 Ghana CDs. Prudential Life Insurance Ghana for every life, for every future. All right, so contestants, please, you may stand. Drop your pens.
and turn over your sheets so we can read the problem of the day together. Problem of the day. Two vehicles, A and B, are identical in every respect except the fuel being used. Vehicle A contains 524.4 grams of 224 trimethyl pentane, also known as isooctane. Vehicle B contains 524.4 grams of ethanol. Assuming that the distance traveled by each vehicle is directly proportional to the heat of combustion of the fuel used, determine how much further one vehicle travels compared to the other. You may take the standard enthalpy of formation in kilojoule per mole of isooctane as negative 260, that for ethanol as negative 280, and carbon dioxide as negative 400. Water can be taken as negative 280. Contestants, this is your problem of the day. You may now begin. of the participating schools, um, current students and old students of the participating schools are outside here sharing their contestants on to victory. Um, we know that Presec Legon, this is their fifth successive um, finals. They've won the NSMQ seven times, hoping to win it for a record um, eighth time. Opokuwari School, they've won it twice. Achimota School is the only co-educational institution um, to have won the NSMQ twice. That's something they can brag about. Um, tonight, one school is going to win, that is going to lift the trophy, and then also lift the money. Um, 70,000 Ghana cities, the winning school is going to carry away, plus a lot, lots of prizes. For many, it's not about the prizes, it's about the bragging rights. Let's speak to some of the um, students from Opokuwai School, some former students from Opokuwai School. But first, I have Jackie here with me. Um, Jackie, um, the first round, where well, we had a lot of fundamental questions yeah. in chemistry, mathematics, um, biology, and then physics, many said the questions were quite tough. Yeah, a little, little bad actually whispered to me that usually in the finals, you have to separate the boys from the men. Yeah, definitely. Now, you know, moving up the ladder in the contest, yeah. it definitely gets tougher. The, the set of questions that they had during the quarterfinals, the semifinals, um, would definitely be um, different from the ones that they have um, during the finale. So personally, I believe that the, um, the students right on stage, uh, they were expectants of these questions. They were yeah. very expectants. And because of my interviews with them earlier, yeah. um, you could see that they were preparing very well for this okay. day. So yeah. um, I, I'm believing that uh, they knew what they were expecting. Yeah. They knew what they were facing today. Yeah. And also, it is worth noting that on that stage, on that big stage is a 16 year old first year student of Opokuwari school. In fact, I saw that picture of him that the NSMQ Facebook page posted and he was pointing to his vein, ice in his vein, meaning even if he's under pressure, he'll still maintain his composure. I want to find out from you, you have been with the team, you've been in the thick of affairs throughout the contest in Kumasi and all of that. You've seen Steven many times. Yeah. He's lived up to the billing, right? Yeah, he has. I you know Stephen is um, just as the Owarians would say, Stephen is the wonder boy of the school because yeah. he's just a former wonder student. boy, poster boy, sixteen Everything. years, yeah. and all the students on stage um, are all in form three. Final, Final year, yeah. he is just a form one student. So I believe that at the end of the day, whatever thing that happens, um, yeah. Stephen has made a mark. He's yeah. made a name for himself. Yeah. And moving forward, we are definitely going to see him next year. Yeah. I believe so. So yeah. he's incredibly doing very well on stage, which I feel like at a stage, it's too big, um, it's too much. Yeah. It's like um, much of a daunting task for him right yeah. now. But he's living up to expectations. Yeah. He's like the star boy of this yeah. year's contest. Trust me, it's not easy to be 
um, on that stage. In fact, a lot of non-science students inside auditorium, outside, many of you watching at home, I'm sure, had to set out a lot of the questions because you are not science students. And this 16 year old is on stage doing magic for his school. But let's speak to the gentlemen who call themselves the Blue Magicians, the Preseconds, uh -huh. the Adadiers. The gentlemen who are saying that they're going to win this competition for a record eight times. Adadiers, tell me, how is the contest going for you? So, uh, the, the contest is exciting, it's, it's going on well. So, we say a very big thank you to God Almighty for starting the contest with us yeah. successfully. And we know that you bring it to a successful end. So, we thank God for this performance. We thank God for this performance. So, we'd like to sing our anthem. Okay. Happy are we, Sujos are we, students of Presbyterian Secondary School. I want to match in charge, I love to have a victory. To victory, to victory. I'm old to his insoluble and broken as a log. Hello, little, 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 with the big most no man. In the light, the light, we shall see light. Hello, little, little, with the big most no man. For Christian training, we get a short, solid foundation to take our places in the future of our country and church. For Christian training, we get a short, solid foundation to take our places in the future of Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So just away. Let's talk to the guys from Opoku High School. Thank you. Respect, Legon. Opoku High School. They are also well represented here. Tell me, Owas, how is it going for you? We just have two schools in Ghana. We have two schools in Ghana. But hopefully, we are taking the trophy back home. I stand by the NS3. The NS3. It was a time, eh? And I'm with me here, BJ. What do you say? Stay with nothing, I will relax it. I'm not staying in our lives. So what are you telling? What are you We are taking it straight to Kumasi, straight to America. South America to the whole world. Yeah. Now, come, 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 come. Tell it's, me, what would, what would this mean to South America? Tell me. Yes. I should speak up. What would this mean to South America? Straight to what? What would this mean to South America? Wait, what? The question again. I mean, what would a victory here mean to South America? Oh, it means. Okay, so, I mean, unlike what you see at uh, the National Theatre where emotions are quite high, especially for boys from the Presbyterian Boys Secondary School, because they are in the lead, well, here in Achimota, the emotions are not the same. Many of the students are down. And a very important exercise was just announced. All the students have been asked to be on their feet. At the moment... I'm sure that they are going to say a word of prayer for the gentlemen that are representing the school on stage. Well, I'm sure in a few minutes we'll see what exactly will happen here. But the emotion, certainly, is not the same as reported when we started the conscious. Uh, the energy was through the roof. Some of the boys were drumming, dancing, and you spoke to, I spoke to some of the ladies and they were much elated. Unfortunately, the problem of the day goes beyond just a question for Achimota. Uh, it will take a series of questions to come back in the game. But it's just this third round. All hopes is not lost. And certainly I'm sure that that's exactly what uh, they will be doing very soon here. Yeah. But let me find out from one of the teachers. Uh, whilst they are preparing, I'm sure, to take a prayer. If you want to pray, you can go ahead and pray. You can go ahead. So, I mean, are you, are you, are you so hopeful that Achimota is, are they still in the game? Oh, we are just in the middle of the game. Okay. And it's not over until it's over. So I'm hopeful that by the end of the third round and we get to the fourth round, God will lead. Sure. So you've heard from one of the teachers from the school. Well, he doesn't think that all hope is lost yet. Well, there was just, just an announcement here for students to hold their hands. And it's a very important exercise, we are told. Uh, the captain of the ship has just taken... Um, his cockpit and it's announcing a series of things we'll listen in what was that happens and with a serious amount of desperation and hunger 
present a request before God. Everyone should partake in this very important exercise. Don't don't stay quiet. Don't stay quiet. No. Don't stay quiet. And open your mouth and talk to God. He hears. So the students in black and white will take a word of prayer and will say a few words to their God Almighty. Come on, come it's on, exact talk mood to God. that talk has. To God. Let your voice fill the auditorium. Um, the, the, the students from Achimoto School have decided to say a word of prayer. They have been praying since the contest started. It is their hope that Let your their God of wonder house. will come through for them this time around. God. Very important. Let him have his way in this contest. That his glory will be seen in the glory of the coast. That his glory will be seen in the glory of the coast. Whoever you are, teacher, student, if you are connected to Achimota in a way, open your mouth with a heart of urgency and talk to God. So if you just join us, this is the Joy News coverage live from Achimota um, School where students are watching the National Science of Mars Quiz. For many of them here, it will only take prayer to change their fortunes. They were hoping that they can for the very first time beat Prosec Legon in a, in a National Science of Mars Quiz finals. For Achimota, the road to the title is now more steeper than ever before. Students have been ordered to say a prayer, a word of prayer for their contestants on stage. You don't want to keep quiet and, and be thinking about who is standing next to you. Open up your mouth and speak in anything, in any language you can speak. Just speak, just speak, just speak. Don't be quiet. So if you just join us, this is live pictures from Achimoto School. Students in a fervent prayer for their students on stage. So... It's a row of prayer from the students of Achimoto School for their students that is, that is representing them on stage at the National Theatre. For them, it will take a prayer to change their fortunes. It is a 10-point gap between themselves and the leading school that is Prisek Legon. And they'd rather use a prayer as a weapon on stage to hope that God Almighty will change that of the, the the points that is going on at the moment so you can hear the song in the background you are worthy oh lord you are wonderful you are worthy oh lord oh, we give you glory lord as we As we are, you are, you are wonderful. wonderful, you are worthy, oh, oh, you are wonderful, 
In the quietness of your heart, you just want to say thank you, Jesus. No matter the circumstance, you want to say thank you, Jesus. No matter what you are seeing on the screen, you just want to say thank you, Jesus. Because we know his will will be done. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. amen. Well, so you heard the conclusion of a prayer ending with a resounding applause from the students who are still hopeful that their fortunes will change in the National Science and Mars Quiz. As it stands now, there are many points behind Prosecco Legon that are taking the pole position. Will that change in the few minutes? I'm sure that we'll hear from the quiz mistress an assessment of what the boys from Achimota managed to write on that board. Will it fetch them the full points which will probably bring them back into the game? Or will it continue to let them lag behind? But certainly for the people in this school in Achimota, they are not out of the contest because the God that they think they worship is a miracle working God that probably can change their fortunes. But again, the energy that they started with, the dancing, the singing, has all vanished. And even some of the seats are now missing their owners. It used to be filled with no place to sit. Many people had to stand, but many of them have abandoned their seats for whatever they want to do now. Well, it's a sad situation here, but again, they keep on. And let me find out from this student here what she thinks of the contest so far. Is it game over for Wachimota? No, please. No, please. We are winners. We still have hope. We are, we are not leaving this right now. You are so many points behind Presek Legon and even I think a point or two behind uh, Opokuwari School. We just prayed and we have faith that God will turn around. You know, He turned everything around for us. And we are winners. We believe we are winners. We go to the finals and either way, yeah, we are winners. We are champions. Wait, you say God is an Accra. Of course God is an Accra. God is old and wise. Well, will God be an Accra? Let's see how that goes for them. And the energy is rising again after their prayer. So 
for Chimota, it is more than just an intellectual battle. Well, there's also a component for them to believe that it becomes a spiritual battle. They have said prayers, they have changed their mood, they have changed their gears, and hopefully they hope that this uh, jubilation will translate on stage for their boys and that their boys will jump back into the game. They don't want to give up until the last question. But it is more than just prayers at this moment that Achimata will need. They will need their boys on stage to also do more. It doesn't answer more questions right. So yes, the mood here certainly has changed, but their marks has not changed. The number of points they have gotten has also not changed. And they're hoping that they will win the spiritual battle at the end of the day. Let's see how it goes for the... Let, let me talk to you. Can I talk to you? Come. What's your name? Stephanie. Stephanie. How, how does it feel right now to be in your position? Oh, right now, you know, we are okay. Because the game is not over yet. We are just waiting upon the Lord. The game is not over. But you are about 10 points behind. Oh yeah, anything can happen. Yeah, with God, everything is possible. Okay, let's hope that God comes through for you. Thank you, Steph. Um, let me find at least a gentleman um, to speak to. This gentleman here is going through his book. What, what, what are you doing? Oh, we are so excited and I know you will you win. I said, but what, what are you doing? Why are you trying to solve some of the questions? This is, uh... Why are you trying some of the questions? No, please. Okay. But do you think Achimota can come back into the game? Yes, you can win. I'm still having the courage. Yes, you can win. You have heard from some of the students. Their resolve is unbroken. They will not give up until the last question. They believe in the prayers that they have said to God, especially who they hope will change their fortunes very, very soon. Before Quiz Mistress Professor Elsie Fakopman has the last question. They're not clapping and dancing once again. Well, if, if, if singing and dancing were a contest, they would have won. Let's look at the suggested solution from the consultants. This is a problem from chemistry, and in fact, it should be very interesting to our sponsor, Gold PLCs, as we are talking about fuels in vehicles. All right, so we have two vehicles, A and B. They are identical in every respect, except the fuel that is being used in these two vehicles. Vehicle one contains 524.4 grams of uh, iso-octane, and vehicle two contains 524.4 grams of ethanol. And the assumption now appears, it's an assumption that the distance traveled by each vehicle is directly proportional to the heat of combustion of the fuel used. And so contestants were to determine how much further one vehicle will travel compared to the other. They were given some information, the standard enthalpy of formation of several things for isooctane, for ethanol, for carbon dioxide, and water. All these were given. So how do you approach this? Let's take the fuels one after the other. So vehicle A has isooctane, fine. In order to tackle this problem, we need a balanced equation. The balanced equation for the combustion of isooctane is C8H18 plus 25 over 2O2 going to 8CO2 plus 9H2O. If you were able to get this balanced equation right, you got one point. The next is to calculate the heat of combustion, because that's what we need in order to make the comparison. So the heat of combustion, we're going to use a balanced equation to do that. So the heat of combustion, delta H, is obtained by taking 8, multiplying negative 400, plus, okay, so we are looking at the product minus the reactant, right? The usual things that you are very good at doing. Plus 9, multiplying negative 280, and then we subtract negative 260, which is the C8H18, the isooctane. Okay, so if we do this, we will get delta H to be 5,980 kilojoules per mole, one point. Now, 
what we need is really to look for the moles of isooctane at this point. If you want the moles of isooctane, you take the mass that was given divided by molar mass. So it's going to be 524.4 divided by 114, and this will give you 4.6 moles of isooctane. So now our delta H, which we are going to use for the comparison, is simply going to be 4.6 moles multiplied by 5,980 kilojoules per mole to give us 27,508 kilojoules. OK, one more point. So we got one point for the balance equation, one point for delta H calculation, one point for the moles, and then one point for this final answer in kilojoule. Four points total for this. All right, then we do a similar thing for the ethanol. For the balanced equation for ethanol, we have C2H5OH plus 3O2 going to 2CO2 plus 3H2O. We do a similar calculation for the delta H kilojoule per mole, right? So we will have 2 multiplying 400 plus 3 multiplying 280 minus negative 280. And this gives us 1,920 kilojoules per mole. So the moles of ethanol, we do a similar thing, is 524.4 uh, grams divided by molar mass for ethanol, which is 46, to give 11.4 moles. And then so our delta H is 11.4 multiplied by 1,920 to give 21,888 kilojoules. So we are not done, okay? So we have four more points here, right? One point, one point, one point, four more points. And then now we have to do the comparison. So the relative heat of combustion of the two, remember we had 27,508. We can divide by the second one, 21,888, and we get a ratio of 1.3. So Vehicle A travels approximately 1.3 times further than vehicle B. If you are able to do the ratio and summarize so beautifully, you get two more points to get a total of 10 points. This was a suggested solution from the consultants. Now, contestants. Um, Dr. Duchin, did you solve it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Opokuari School. You have the balanced equation for iso octane combustion. I'll give you one point for that. Then, um, hmm. The balanced equation for ethanol combustion, I had to ask the two of you, telling me different things. But don't worry. I'll give you one point for that as well. <laughs> the rest of the things you have there, honestly, will not lead anywhere. So you have two out of 10. <laughs> Achimota School. You have two balanced equations. You have the moles of isooctane calculated, or at least set up, ready for calculation, right? Uh-huh. And uh, the rest of it, I don't think, was taking you anywhere. And so you have three out of 10. Presbyterian boys, you also have the two balanced equations. You calculated for the moles of isooctane, and you have the moles of ethanol. Do you have anything else? No, there's nothing else. And so you have four out of 10. That's the end of the problem of the day and the end of round three.
Before we begin the next round, we have some substitutions. Opokuware School would like to effect the substitution. Dante, it's been a pleasure having you. All the best to you. And in comes Forsen. Forsen, you are welcome. Achimota School would like to effect a substitution as well. Bakita, it's been a pleasure. All the best to you. And in comes Kenneth. You are welcome, Kenneth. All right, contestants. It is at this point that we introduce you to a beautiful trophy. Bringing the trophy for us is our past champion from last year, Mr. John Enim Tenkran, a member of the Presec 2022 winning team. Tenkran, you are most welcome. Good to see you again. He happens to be in my computer engineering department. You are most welcome, and thank you for bringing our trophy. Gentlemen of Presbyterian Boys Secondary School, of Achimota School, of Opokuari School, have you seen the trophy? <laughs> Please, whatever tiredness you have at this stage, put that behind you and work hard for that trophy. Okay? All right? Okay, good. Round four. In this round, I'm going to be presenting you with statements. When you receive a statement, please consider the statement carefully and let me know whether it's true or false. If you are right, two points. If you are incorrect, you lose a precious point. You may choose not to respond, in which case that statement is available to the two remaining schools. A school may ring and attempt an answer. If right, two full points. If not, there's a penalty. Best wishes, everyone. For the first set of statements, I have a short preamble to all schools. Preamble. A function f of x is one to one if, that's a preamble, that's all. So Presbyterian boys, it is increasing over its domain or it is decreasing over its domain. Selenum. True. You are right. With the same preamble, whenever A equals B, then F of A is equal to F of B. Walter? False. Yes. <laughs> Opokuare. Whenever f of a is equal to f of b, then a is equal to b. Yes, 
Yes, Forson. True. That's right. The next set comes with another preamble. Please pay attention to your preamble. An ideal gas at pressure P is contained in a fraction of the volume of a thermally insulated vessel by a membrane, the remaining part of the vessel being empty. The membrane is suddenly ruptured, the gas now filling the whole vessel. An ideal gas at pressure P is contained in a fraction of the volume of a thermally insulated vessel by a membrane, the remaining part of the vessel being empty. The membrane is suddenly ruptured, the gas now filling the whole vessel. Presbyterian boys, the expansion of the gas is adiabatic. Seldenham. False. No, that's a true statement. With the same preamble, the expansion of the gas is isentropic. Yes, Walter. False. False. You're right. With the same preamble. The expansion of the gas is isoenergetic. Forsen? True. You're right. Presbyterian boys. The percentage dissociation of acetic acid in a 5% vinegar solution is higher than in a 2% vinegar solution. Selenam. True. No. Motor school using vinegar at a temperature of 35 degrees Celsius instead of 25 degrees Celsius will increase the dissociation of acetic acid and pH of the solution, thereby enhancing its action. Kenneth. False. You're right. <laughs> A greater concentration of hydrozonium ions occurs in a 4% vinegar solution compared to a 3% vinegar solution, and thus the 4% solution will have a lower pH. Yes, Forsen? False. No. in a hypertonic solution tend to shrink due to water loss. Yes, Salinam. False.
Hashimoto School. In humans, sodium ion concentration is highest in the intracellular fluid. Kenneth? False. You're right. Pokuari School. When a dehydrated individual needs to be given body fluids intravenously, he or she is given saline at a concentration that is isotonic with respect to body fluids. Yes, Fawson. False. No. That's a true statement. a preamble to all schools. Preamble. Preamble. The graph of the quadratic function y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c is above the x-axis if the preamble again. The graph of the quadratic function y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c is above the x-axis if Presbyterian boys b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. Party. True. Oh no. Silence, please. We beg you. Please, no clapping. We beg you. Shall we continue? Thank you, Presec. Achimota School with the same preamble. B squared minus 4AC is greater than zero. Kenneth? False. You are right. <laughs> Opokuare. with the same preamble. B squared minus 4AC is less than zero, and A is less than zero.
False then? True. No. That's a false statement. The next set comes with a preamble to all schools. Preamble. Preamble. Please allow us to continue. Please. It takes a lot of concentration to do this. Please. Thank you very much. Preamble to all schools. Proton-proton chains are fundamental to solar processes to which we ultimately owe terrestrial solar radiation, also known as insulation. That's a preamble. Again, proton-proton chains are fundamental to solar processes to which we ultimately owe terrestrial solar radiation, also known as insulation. All right, so Presbyterian boys, the first reaction in any proton-proton chain produces helium-2, which then participates in subsequent reactions of the chain. Yes, Patty. False. You're right. with the same preamble. The first reaction in any proton-proton chain is exothermic and produces hydrogen-2 or deuterium, which then participates in subsequent reactions of the chain. Yes, Walter? False. No, that's a true statement. With the same preamble. The stable end product of any proton-proton reaction is an alpha particle. Forsen? True. You're right. Presbyterian boys, 2-butanol is a secondary alcohol that exhibits stereoisomerism. Selenum. True. Yes. Three methyl. 3-pentanol is a tertiary alcohol that exhibits stereoisomerism. Walter? False. Yes. Three chloro. One butanol is a primary alcohol that exhibits stereoisomerism.
Yes, false. False. No, it's a true statement. Last set of statements. And I have a preamble to all schools. Preamble. Preamble. A plant physiologist provided the plant with ideal conditions for photosynthesis and supplied it with isotopic carbon of carbon dioxide. Indicate whether the following are true or false with respect to the nature of the products. One more time. Please, they need to hear this preamble. They need to hear the preamble, please. A plant physiologist provided a plant with ideal conditions for photosynthesis and supplied it with isotopic carbon of carbon dioxide. That means carbon 14O2, right? Indicate whether the following are true or false with respect to the nature of the products. Presbyterian boys, both glucose and oxygen are normal. Selenium. False. You're right. With the same preamble. Both glucose and oxygen are labeled. Yes, Walter. False. You're right. Last statement of Pokuwara with the same preamble. Only oxygen is labeled, but glucose is normal. Fossen. False. You are right. And that's the end of the fourth round. Uh, get more points and win. That's why I was queen. Okay, so how do you feel so far the performance of, with your boys? I know performance is not uh, encouragement, but I am praying so that we can bring the trophy back to our school. Okay, so, so you are just praying, just like what happened in Achimota School. So um, that's a student from Opokuwaru School. And let's enjoy some of the Imanu's chants. points. Achimota School has 28 points. Presbyterian Boys Secondary School has 31 points. The championship will be decided in this fifth and final round. Round five. Let me remind you that it is this round, round five, that has the goal super bonanza. The goal super bonanza is proudly sponsored by goal good energy. If a school solves one riddle, 1,000 Ghana CDs. Two riddles, 2,000 Ghana CDs. Three riddles, 3,200 Ghana CDs. And all four riddles, 4,000 Ghana CDs. I know you are working for the championship, but these are significant monies, right? So you should try very hard to get some money in the goal super bonanza as well. All right, so round five, we are solving riddles. I will be reading out the clues. Your objective, of course, is to solve the riddle. 
For an opportunity to solve a riddle, you must ring for it. May I hear your bell, Opokuwari School? Thank you. Your Sachimota School, thank you. And yours, Presbyterian Boys, thank you. If you solve the riddle on the first clue, five points. On the second clue, four points. On the third or any clue thereafter, three points. Of course, there are four of them. Best wishes, everyone. Best wishes, really. First riddle. We need silence. Thank you so much. I am a colorless organic acid with a characteristic acrid smell. I may be formed from the dehydration of lactic acid. I may also be produced from the partial oxidation of propene. I am mainly used, all right, yes, Fawson? Propanoic acid. Again? Propanoic acid. That's incorrect. Who rang? Yes. Go ahead, Kenneth. One, two, three, propane trioic acid. No. <laughs> For you. I am mainly used in the synthesis of polymers and resins, which are employed in diverse applications, including plastics, paints, adhesives, and polishes. Perhaps my most familiar products are nail extensions and glossy nail polishes popular among women. Okay, I am the simplest unsaturated carboxylic acid and have a molecular formula C3H4O2. So who am I? All right, which of you selenum? Propinoic acid. Propinoic acid. You are right. a very interesting riddle, wasn't it? So the ladies that have been going to the uh, nail parlors and getting nail extensions like this one, eh? when you go there, they call it acrylic. Now you know it's propinoic acid, right? Uh -huh. Signs everywhere around us. Okay. Next one. I am a type of infection of an annual occurrence which affects hundreds of thousands of, thousands of people in Ghana every year. Okay, yes. Conjunctivitis. Continue for your benefits. Since 
my first report from Ghana. I have been described in numerous other countries, including China, India, Egypt, Cuba, Japan, and the United States. One is more likely to get infected if one frequently visits public facilities such as gyms, bathrooms, and saunas where body fluids are commonly transferred onto shared surfaces. I am a specific type of conjunctivitis. Yes, Patty. Acute hemorrhagic conjunctivitis. That's the one. Hello, hello, please, please, Presbyterian boys, let's. Next one. I am a physical phenomenon. I bear in part the name of the one who demonstrated the equivalence of heat and mechanical work. I am, yes. Yes, which of you? Kenneth. Cannot cycle. I continue for you. employed in cooling and refrigeration. Yes, Stephen. Joe Thompson effect. Joe Thompson effect. You are right. They solved the riddle on the third clue, three points, three points. Last One, please, please. Thank you. Let us get straight to the point. I am not the point, but that is what I'm all about. 
I relate to a point in the Cartesian plane. I am simply an ordered pair. Yes. Locos. Locos. No. Yes. Origin. No, for you. I am simply an ordered pair of real numbers. My components are the abscissae and the ordinates. I determine the position of a point in the XY plane. So who am I? Yes, Selena. Coordinates. Of course. What else? the clues, three points, three Twenty-three, 30th anniversary edition of the National Science and Math Quiz. Well done. Hmm. Presbyterian boys, <laughs> there are some things I must tell you first. You know we've had this AT Higher Scorer Award sponsored by AT Life is Simple. At this grand finale, the Higher Scorer Award is worth 10,000 Ghana CDs. I am happy to say that you have earned that award. Well done. But for me, the most important thing is to congratulate you on your win today. You have won back to back for the second time. <laughs> That is just amazing. Well done. Well done. You know this is our 30th anniversary. And so I am happy to also declare you the 30th anniversary champions of the National Science and Math Quiz. <laughs> Congratulations and well done. Viewers, before we leave, I would like to say a few thank yous. 
I wish to thank all the teachers who work so hard to get our students ready for this. I wish to thank all the schools that contribute in various ways to make sure that this program runs every single year. I want to thank the parents, including my own mommy dearest who is watching at home. Thank you for allowing your children to participate in a program like this. I want to thank all of our supporters who visit us, who watch this program every single contest, and enjoy yourselves doing so all this well. Thank you so much. I would like to thank the quiz mistresses. Ladies, where are you? Thank you for your work. And I want to give a special thank you to the consultants. Consultants, without you, there is no NSMQ. Thank you for your many sacrifices. Thank you so very much for the sleepless nights and for the beautiful questions you keep producing year after year. I thank you, special thank you to you. Thank you. Ah, viewers, thank you all very much. I want to thank the production team as well and all the sponsors and everyone else who has made this year's production possible. Thank you so much. My name is Elsie Fakoffman, and until we come your way again, thank you, thank you, and thank you. Bye-bye. This has been a primetime production. <laughs>